Hey, welcome, or oh, welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is that a brand that was on my shoot list has made its way onto the off of the shit list, but onto the I'm a watching you list. But I'm a giving you one more chance. And that company is Tarte. Now, they went on my shit list because of the appalling shade range on their new shape tape whatever the heck they called it, foundation, which was, you know, 15 shades of beige, a caramel, a tan, and, and that was about it, really. Um, that, along with the fact that they'd been basically recycling the same old hash each year, um, you know, the same blush books, the same few neutral colours in a palette, uh, and then when they tempted us with the icy betch and then went, oh, we know, we know you really liked that, but uh, yeah, April Fool. <laughs> that was it. Shit list. Not interested anymore. And then, uh, the day before Jeffrey uh, released uh, Blue Blood, they announced she's happening. But she's not the £16 Tartlet palette that we originally promised you. She's a £9 with a highlighter. So the question is... How does Icy Betch fare when it comes to performance? Because in terms of packaging, yeah, 10 out of 10. Beautiful. Although, the stickery thing on the top. Yeah, mine, mine's not centralised. Look, get the feeling that's going to end up peeling up before long. <sighs> but never mind the packaging. How does the palette behave? If you want to find that out, you're going to have to watch this. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, okay, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd, primed. I appear to have a patch of sunlight just on my chin. Look at that, way. <laughs> I film in a south facing kitchen, so I have daylight and then I have two LED strip lights behind the camera. Right, you will have seen this in the intro. <clears throat> now Tarte were on my shit list because of that awful foundation. Um, you know, 15 shades of beige, a caramel, a tan. And that was about it really. Um, and that was just, I'd, I'd had enough by that point. I was sick and tired of, you know, smaller, more independent brands. Maybe you can understand a more reduced colour range because they've not got the money to do the full, huge range to cover everybody's skin tone. But someone like Tarte, I mean, come on. So they went onto my shit list and as far as I was concerned, that was it. I wasn't going to talk about them on my channel. I wasn't going to use them on my channel, even though I've already got a lot of foundations of theirs that I'd already bought and uh, palettes that I'd already bought long before I started this channel. Then they did that icy bitch April Fool's thing last year, and I'm like, oh, I know I said I wasn't going to buy from them, but that's beautiful. And then I found out it was a joke. And that was it. I'm like, oh, you, you ass hole. I was not happy. And then, 
they announced they are releasing the Icy Bitch. So I'm expecting this gorgeous tartlet 16 pan palette. And they've reduced it to something this size. Admittedly, that packaging is everything. Just look at it. Ooh, it's going to be a bitch to show you the colours. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I caved, basically. Uh, when you open it up, you get a good sized mirror to it. And the little slippy thing says, what's cooler than being cool? Me. Qu'est-ce que qu'est-ce que cool que le fracieux? Moi. I probably completely butchered that because I don't think I've used my French since I left school 29 years ago, except to order a toasted ham and cheese sandwich, a milky coffee and a beer. Oh, and some wine. And ask where the toilets were. <clears throat> so, this is Icy Bitch. I have swatched her. And I kind of went down this row, down that row, down that row, and then did the highlighter right across the bottom. Um, I am struggling at the moment with my fibro. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm also having issues where my eyes are streaming, not helped by the fact that my hay fever has started. So, you're going to have to bear with if I end up with bits at the edge or bits on the inner corner going a different colour. Um, I will let you know that whether that is because of my eyes or whether it's the palette. Um, I have swatched this and once, while I'm zooming in I'll put the swatches up. Uh, just quickly though, my channel is aimed at every skill level from people who've never picked up a brush before to complete experts. I'm not claiming to be an expert, far from it. If I'm going too slow for you, because my chronic pain means I physically can't blend any quicker than I am doing, YouTube has a thing called a speed widget. You can speed me up. I won't be offended. I will, however, be offended if you start moaning that my tutorials are too long. Please remember what it was like when you were beginning, when you were a learner, and how long it took you to do an eye makeup look. Thank you. That was my TED talk for the day. Right, here's the swatches. While I zoom in, they are from left to right, i.e. from wrist to elbow. They are Veronica Heather Sherrill. Becky, Georgina, Aria, Blair, Miranda, Vivian, and then the highlighter, if you can see on my skin, is Regina. And I'm back. Hello. Um, I thought, seeing as how I'm actually using some tart stuff, I use my tart shape tape on my eyelids as my primer. This is shade 8B Porcelain Beige. And I have set it with a Coty Airspun Extra Coverage Translucent Setting Powder. <sighs> Anybody think English wasn't my first language? Right. Now, it does have a white here. Which normally I would use to dust across because... Actually, I think I might do. Because colours from the same palette do tend to work best on themselves. Quite a bit of kick up in pan but that doesn't bother me because it does mean that you get uh, pigment on the brush. So I'm just going to sweep this mainly across my mobile eyelid and then sweeping up so it kind of fades out as I get towards my brows. Now, I have deep set eyes, so I struggle with the same kind of issues that people with hooded eyes have. And a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes. You see what I mean about the hay fever cracking in with the 
weepy eyes. I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, really, already? <sighs> Alright, we're just going to have to ignore that bit for a minute. Uh, this brush, by the way, is a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush. Now, when I look straight ahead, with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have a hooded lid. If your static lid covers part or all of your mobile lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. I have deep set eyes, so if I cover my mobile lid this size, this size, this side, and then close my eye. You can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in. So I totally understand the issues that people with hooded lids have of shimmers transferring up, having to do the weirdest shapes when you cut in your crease, glitters, even with glitter glow, completely disappearing through the crease there. So I, I feel your pain, trust me. You can still follow my tutorial though. All you need to do is get something like this flat brush or a pencil brush and with your eye open just sketch out where you would need your crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow so just use a slightly smaller brush than I do basically because whatever the size of the head of the brush that's how far potentially it can blend a shadow out. So if I'm using something like this you can use something more tapered. Maybe that's not such a good example. Something like this, maybe. Um, and if I'm using something like this, you could go down to something like this. And if I'm using something like this, you could come down to something like... Well, it's about the same, actually, but because it's so loose, it, it tends to blend out more towards the middle bit than the edges. So... You know, just work with what you've got, folks, basically. Get used to your own eye shape. Have a play around with makeup in a time when you're not in a rush and you can just practice and find out what suits your eye shape. Right. I'm, I'm back. We're going to try this again. Or I might have just jumped straight to this, otherwise this film's going to be hella long. Right, okay. So, um, I'm going to start off with, uh, let's go in with my... I'm going to go in with my Luxie 205 tapered blending brush. I've got Tarte Shape Tape in 8B Porcelain Beige on my lids, not set. Okay, so I am going to go into Georgina, which is a really lovely teal. Um, as usual, quite a bit of kick up in pan from Tarte, that doesn't bother me because at least you're getting pigment on the brush. And I'm going to start off just by tapping that across rather than sweeping it because obviously this is a sticky base. So if I try and sweep it too early, it'll just go patchy. So I'm just going to gently tap as I go across the eye to build that pigment up. Holding the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on as possible. I'm just going to do some little tiny circular movements to see if I can blend that together. Yeah, this is looking okay. I quite like this colour actually. I mean, to be fair, this would be easier to go travelling with than Jeffrey's one. But then you have a lot more choice in Jeffrey's one. But 
if you're travelling, sometimes having too much choice can be a tad overwhelming and then you're spending so long in the morning getting ready that before you realise it, it's lunchtime. Just relaxing my brows down to see how much of that colour appears above the... Because obviously my eye does disappear back in a bit because of the deep set eyes. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit more. Just so that I've got roughly the same amount showing all the way along. And again tiny little circular movements just to help blend that together. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. My eye that side is really watering. So again, if you've had to create your crease, then you tap along the line that you've made. I'm just basically following my eye socket at the moment. But you'll see in a minute, when I open my eye up, just how much of that disappears back in. Once you've tapped, you can start very lightly doing a bit of a blend. but. With a sticky base, you don't want to blend too quickly or too much, or you will end up blending all the colour away. Okay, I just need to put a little bit more up on this bit here. Now, I do struggle with this eye, I get a lot more fallout with this eye because the skin on this eyelid moves more. Um, this is the eye that I'm blinding. And it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. Um, and as such, I've now got really deep creasing here, which, as you can see, does that to me. Which I don't tend to get on this side. So, unfortunately, I do have to actually stretch my lid out a little bit to deal with that. Do not do this unless you have the same issue as me already. Otherwise, you will end up with deep creasing. And I promise you, as you get older, it only gets worse. Because that didn't show up. I, my eyes got pulled around between the ages of 5 and sort of... 13, I suppose. When I went totally blind in this eye. If you want a story time about that, let me know and I'll do it on a get ready with me or something. So that's like nearly 40 years ago they started to pull this around because I'm going to be 45 at the beginning of May. So, but I didn't really notice that creasing or the looseness of the lid until I hit my sort of mid, mid to late 30s. And by the time I hit 40, that was it. Those creases were there and they were going nowhere, mate. I'm just going to sit back and I, I sort of check between the two to make sure the shape is looking the same because, you know, your eyes aren't symmetrical. So, well, at least most people's aren't. If you're blessed with perfectly symmetrical eyes, thank you, Moa. coming up quite quite true to pan. It's a little bit lighter than than it looks in pan. But I probably could build it up a bit more if I wanted to, but I'm quite happy with that particular shade. So I'm just cleaning some of this pigment off of this brush on the washcloth. And as you can see, it does stain the brush. Do enjoy. Just as well, I've kept a set of brushes specifically for blues, huh? As you can see from this one, which I use with the Blue Blood palette. I 
I do like the fact that Tarte has finally come out with this palette. But I don't understand why they couldn't come out with the 16 pan. The Tarte lip palette that they originally sort of sneak peeked as the April Fool. Because oh, this does feel like a little bit of a cop out, I will admit. Right. Um, I'm going to go into Heather, which is the pale cornflower blue. Basically matches my kitchen wall. That, see? Look at that. This is one of the, if you watch my brushes that I recommend, this is the brush set that I got from AliExpress. And this is the tapered blending brush number six. So I'm going to start off initially. You can see I'm sort of tapping this half on that first colour we put down and half on my skin. Now I do struggle in this top corner here to get pigment to lay down. Mm, okay, this brush isn't dense enough. Let's grab my I'm grabbing my Carla Crease Brush 515. I got this from Shop Miss A. I'm just gonna there we go. I can actually see some colour going on now. So I'm kind of tapping that along, half on the previous colour and half on my non-set eyelid. And then sort of blending the two together. Just to sort of lighten this up as you come up the eye. This cornflower blue is not exactly the most pigmented shade I've ever used, I will admit. I mean, even. Right, I am. Right, watch. I am properly loading that brush up. I'm not tapping off. Where's the pigment? Like. Seriously, dude, where's the pigment? This is what annoys me. I was really starting to enjoy this on that first colour. And then you go for the light one and you properly struggle to get it to actually show up. And I've got really, really, really pale skin, so someone with deeper skin than me. I don't know how well this would actually translate for you. Hmm. I mean, you can see I'm exactly the same as I did with the first one. I'm tapping all the way along back again to lay the pigment down and to set the base effectively. And then sort of trying to blend the two together but I, I just feel like I'm blending the teal out but there's not really, I feel like I'm blending it out almost with like a translucent shade because I don't feel like I'm getting much in the way of cornflower blue at the top at all um, I'm wondering if it's worth, I'm going to try one of my try every single brush in my collection. I'm going to go in with one of my uh, Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brushes. And see if this will... See that's, that's softer on my skin when I'm blending it, but it's still not... I mean like, dude, where's the pigment? Seriously. Just... Where is it? I, I genuinely am baffled. This is annoying. I really wanted to like this palette. And I was liking this palette. Look, I mean, even with this really dense brush. I am struggling to see any form of pigment there at all. 
I mean, is it me? Or is this just blooming ridiculous? with my fibro, if I sit here and blend like this much more, it already feels like I'm rubbing a cheese grater across my eyelids where I've blended so long. I'm going to try picking up some of that first shade and just try and soften that up into the non-existent light blue, just to try and give me at least the Illusion of a blended edge there. Wow. Oh, Tart. I wanted to like this palette so much. I mean, it's possible when I watch this back in HD that I'll see more pigment going down than I'm seeing in my viewfinder or in my mirror but man this is frustrating and like I said it's actually quite painful as well because one of my fibro symptoms because everybody's fibro symptoms I mean there are a lot of similar symptoms but most people have you know symptoms that are that affect them that don't affect the next person with fibro for example and one of mine is I get very super sensitive skin to the point that um, I've got one of those shower heads that you can change the setting from like jet to spray to um, almost like a mist and uh, you know when, when my fibre is really bad, I have it on the mist setting and even then just the feeling of that mist touching my skin is just so painful. So I am, I am properly struggling here folks, this is so sore. I really do not want to continue blending this any more than I have to but likewise you know, I want to give the palette a good go. brush 9 in the same um, set that I mentioned before, the eBay set, and I'm going to go into Vivian. I'm just going to tap this on me outer edge here initially. Try a couple of gentle blends to see what sort of colour we're going to end up with. Okay. And I'm going to run that one through the crease. And then just very gently, just gently buff that just to blend the edges out a bit because anything that's dark recedes, anything that's light comes forward so especially if you've had to create your crease with a hooded lid this is a great trick to do because it does give the illusion of that piece of the eye just disappearing and receding back in Seriously, this eye feels like it should be bleeding. So I sometimes wish that the, the sort of the chronic pain that I feel was visible sometimes because I, I really don't think people... Anyone who lives with chronic pain 
get so used to functioning at pain levels that most people would be screaming in agony and unable to get out of bed that, you know, when we say we're having a really bad day and they look at us and they say, well, you're up, you've showered, you've done your hair, you've got makeup on, mm -hmm, yeah, you look alright. Yeah, I look alright, but I feel like I've gone ten rounds with a prize fighter and then been run over by the Paloma Bull Stampede. And then had someone attack my skin with a cheese grater. And massage it afterwards with a rock covered in salt. <sighs> Sorry, I'm having a I'm having a bit of a whinge. I apologise. This is most unlike me. I don't normally I don't normally whinge about my pain like this, but the amount of blending I've just had to do has really, really irritated my skin just up there. Um, to the point that I nearly stopped doing this tutorial. Uh, I was going to sack it off and just do it a different day. But I know I've got to put some kind of makeup on because I'm going out with the hubby later. So I want to look slightly respectable when we go into the pub. I should of course be on well, soft drinks because I'm the driver. I'm always the driver. So rarely get to drink these days. Not that I miss it. I mean, I've had a bottle of wine in the fridge for about a month that I haven't touched yet. Right. I'm going to pick up uh, this brush. Which is actually just, it's another cheap set from eBay, but I liked it because it looks like the Jeffrey handle but with a little bit of green on the end as well. It's basically a, um, a flat concealer or a packing brush. Um, God, I'm an unholy mess right now. I'm actually going to go into the white, the Veronica. I'm just going to this on my, my uh, lid just to brighten it up a bit. Just very carefully running that through and just buffing at the edge there. Again, if I don't do this, it will sit in those creases and then I'm going to get fallout through the day. And whilst it's a really great trick for getting multicoloured freckles to basically appear on your face like magic through the day, not the look I'm going for today. Now, the problem with this which is exactly the same issue that I had with Jeffrey's blood sugar is there isn't a light blue shimmer which is really annoying because in terms of shimmer I've got those options. Like, seriously? So I'm going to try this one here, which is Cheryl. And I'm going to hope that having put that white down first, it might lighten it a little bit. So, I'm going to pack some pigment onto this brush. And then to give it as good a chance as any, I'm going to give it a bit of a spray. 
I'm using a setting spray but you can use anything you like, setting spray, priming spray, uh, moisturising spray like Mary Badescu or MAC Fix Plus or you can just use clean water, whatever whatever works for you but don't put a wet brush into a dry pigment or you will end up, or a dry pressed pigment that is and you will end up with hard pan so let's just, just dry that brush off, I'm going to try it dry this time instead of wetting it No, that was even worse. Okay, go back to wetting it, Edge. Really, really unimpressed with this so far. I'm going to grab a sponge tip applicator. You know those ones we all throw away? So I'm going to try something. Hmm. These work great with like pressed glitters and things in terms of picking them up and laying them on your lid, but that's just uh, that's not really giving me any any shine either, is it? I don't want to have to go in with my finger. Have you seen the length of my bloody nails? See, even going in with that, I'm not, not majorly impressed. Let's be honest, I'm not impressed at all. Use this pad with micellar water on just to sort of tidy up the fallout and try and get some shaping back in. Do you see what I mean? Like, look how red my skin has gone there from all the blending. It is protesting loudly, very loudly. Mm. Right, I'm going to uh, disappear off and I'm going to pop some foundation on. <sighs> Have a slurp of my iced coffee and I'll be back. See if I can sort out this train wreck of a look. I'm back. Right. Uh, let's do these under eyes. Hmm. Right, I've got this flat top brush. And I'm going to dip into Becky. Which obviously, I have not used yet. Look at her, she's beautiful. I'm just going to smell. Oh, hello, Becky. You are making your presence felt. And I'm just going to run that along there, like so. And the 
the sign this side and yes my eyes streaming like mad thanks a bunch take it a little bit further along I think clean the brush and then I have got another little flat top brush here. Believe it or not, this came in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Uh, and it's flat top, but it's chunky. I like them big. I like them chunky. Um, and I'm going to go into Miranda, which is the green. Which has got a bit of sparkle to it by the look of it. But we're going to give her a go. And we're just going to run her all the way along and just help buff out so that it picks up the green in my eyes and also helps link with the teal that I used on my upper lids yeah I'm flinching and pulling all kinds of faces this side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision so number of times you'll see me poke myself in the eye because I didn't quite judge it right <coughs> make a drinking game out no don't make a drinking game out of it <laughs> you'll be very very unwell by the end of it I assure you of that one and then this is just a cheap flat top brush that I got off of eBay years ago so I'm going to go into Regina the highlight which I'm hoping it's got a blue shift to it, but it kind of looks a little bit just like a pale champagne, which, yeah, that, that's, that's a warm tone highlighter girl. Oh. Man, this eye looks turning into a hot mess. I mean, look. That, that's a warm toned highlighter. Ignore the, the blue here, that's fallout from that that fell into there. That's something else I don't like about this palette. It's like. Put one of the darkest shades right next to the highlighter, why don't you? And then make it a really, really powdery shade. Oh yeah, and to top it all off, two days after I bought it, the friends and family thing started. Where apparently, I thought, oh it's brand new, doesn't matter, they wouldn't have let me use it on that anyway, then I get an email through saying, don't forget you can use code BESTIES, runs out tonight, you can get 30% off including the new Icy Betch palette, and I'm just like, really? <sighs> Girl was not happy, I tell you. Girl was Pissed. Right, I'm going to pause you, I'm going to bung this highlighter on the rest of my face, stick a bit of mascara and a bit of lippy on and I'll be back with my final thoughts on this first impression. But I think you can probably guess what they're going to be. Hmm. Alright, I'm back. Okay, so... <sighs> What do I think of this Icy Batch palette? It's produced an okay look. But I can get an okay look from £4 Revolution palette. My eyelids are absolutely screaming at me to the point that I think once I've taken some photos of this for Instagram, I'm going to have to take all this makeup off and get a cool pack and put it on because the amount of work I had to do to get that light blue to show up and to get it to blend just. 
they just didn't want to know. Um, I'm not giving up on it completely, I'm going to give it another go. But so far, really not that impressed by it. So, let me know what you think. Uh, do you have this? If you have, have you made it work? How? <laughs> what brushes did you use? What techniques did you use? Um, packaging's bomb. But... 24 bucks for nice packaging. And that highlight is absolutely a yellow based highlight in an icy toned palette. You couldn't even make it pure white. You didn't have to put a blue shift to it or even a green shift to it. Because you just made it pure white. But no, you have to put a warm toned highlighter into a blue and green palette. The logic behind that, I absolutely fail to see. Right, uh, on that rather disappointing end, uh, I'm going to um, <laughs> film the intro <laughs> and take all this off. No, film the intro, take some photos, take all this off. Uh, while I'm doing that, you could be watching some more of my films. That would be awesome. Um, please double check that you're still subscribed because I'm still getting YouTube unsubscribing people. Um, I don't know what YouTube's doing right now. I don't even think YouTube knows what it's doing. But whatever it's doing, it's not helping smaller creators, that is for sure. So, yeah. Um, I hope you found this helpful. I am going to do what I need to do and then I'm taking this off my face. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.